es quizás el nuevo escudo de una ciudad, porque lo que busca es que sobre todo te toque el corazón. Y que cuando tú te vayas del restaurante donde comas un plato, eh, el plato no se acabe en la boca, sino la historia continúe. ¿no? Y que continúe para beneficio de todo lo que está alrededor de ese plato. Chefs, 
but you also work a lot with social innovation and with education. How do you get all these things together? How, how, do you, how, do you, how is it actually possible? Uh, if, uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm really honored to be here. Um, I'm very happy because I'm learning every minute from Swedish culture. Um, well, it depends on what you want to take what you're doing no? in the different levels that you want. Uh, the reality is that cooking and uh, food touches almost everything. Agriculture, uh, fishery, environment, education, nutrition, commerce, industry, promotion of your culture in the world, integration, tolerance. So uh, it depends on how many commitments the chef wants to put in your life to use his job, not only to create great dishes, which is what we really love, what we were born to, but also to use all the opportunities that food has to uh, bring the same opportunities that you have in your, in your work to the persons and the people that are related with your work, at least. So uh, one dish is not going to be beautiful. For example, if you make a ceviche, if the fish that you are using for the ceviche, uh, the fisherman that caught the fish, can't uh, give a good education to the children. So you are, you are involved in that. And so it depends how much you want to see around, how much you want to get involved to. And uh, the reality is that at the end, <coughs> your food gets better when you spend uh, the same time you spend in the kitchen, outside the kitchen. And you, you told me you, you're working actually with two million school kids. Yeah, that's starting. A starting. Yeah, a starting. Uh, just, yes. just tell us a little bit about this project. I think it's quite uh, amazing. We started these schools. Uh, that's those are cooking schools that are sponsored by us. Uh, in, the, in a very uh, poor environment in, in the country. We have three right now. Uh, where young kids that didn't have opportunities to to find a good uh, instruction, education for his future, for their future. So we build this cooking school, these great cooking schools with great teachers. Uh, so we could give them the opportunity to to become chefs, but with a great education, not not only an assistant education, a great education. So uh, since that moment. We've been trying to uh, promote policies uh, where uh, food, our culture, our biodiversity could be used <coughs> in the, all the social problem, problems that the government were doing. Uh, finally, uh, there's a moment where this movement had the, the chance to in a good way, press these policies. The society was united around what means food to us. Uh, we were recovering our our pride, our biodiversity, and we were using them, and we were eating them, and we were cooking our biodiversity. Uh, the, the customers w were starting to love again their own ingredients, their own culture, and suddenly the policy started to change. Right now, there is a state policy, there's new, this new, new state policy, where uh, after a couple of years, maybe 200 years actually, where uh, uh, all the social programs, uh, nutrition programs, were, came from the capital to the rest of the country. In Peru we have 85 different weathers, so we have a lot of different cultures, languages, ingredients, environments, but all the policies came from, from the capital. So right now, uh, two million children in the public schools will receive every day uh, breakfast and lunch uh, based on the ingredients of their own environment, on the recipes of their own cultures, and uh, supplied by small farmers or their own environment, uh, making menus uh, together with
teachers, fathers, farmers, and kids. And uh, this is very important. This is very important because it's going to change everything. It's going to change uh, the chain. It's going to change uh, the way they were playing. And we're going to start <coughs> to build also. We actually already started in two schools. And in a couple of years, there are going to be all the schools, I hope, uh, small farms inside the schools where the kids who will uh, uh, work with the, with the soil, uh, learn ingredients, talk with the farmers to start respecting them, admiring them. So we change the relation between the city and the fields that were used a lot of time with politics, mm -hmm. you know, straight politics, to fight together. And they will, uh, uh, we're going to build also, we're building already also a, a small house uh, where the kids will cook and they will eat what they cook so they can uh, learn about their culture, being proud of their culture since they're young. So they'll be strong because when they go to the, their houses, they only see, they put on the TV on, they, they only see this industrial food. Mm -hmm. So if they start from the beginning to love the nature, to love the ingredients, to love how they taste, to love, how to, love to cook them, and then they will, they will sit in tables to spend time, to get inside that value of spending time, to sharing, to talk, tolerance. So there's a whole chain, uh, a lot of good things which, uh, could happen when you build these kids related to nature, related to our culture, and being proud of it. You had a fantastic uh, um, definition of, of um, tradition when we spoke the other day. Um, and I'm coming back to that because what you're doing in this case is that you're actually reinventing or rediscovering hidden old traditions and, and knowledge that, that, that used to be there. <coughs> No, of course not me. No, we're, we're, we're in a process. I, I think it's all, all over the world. We're, we're all over the world. We're rediscovering our traditions, putting inside our, our soul, and being proud of. Uh, uh, I know it's happening uh, a couple of years ago also in Sweden. Uh, using our own ingredients in Peru. Uh, it's true, we gave 500 years ago, uh, we gave what our engineers, our biotechnology engineers of 5,000 years ago, <coughs> they uh, domesticated potatoes, corn, beans, tomatoes, strawberries, chocolate, cacao, cocoa, uh, peanuts, uh, passion fruits, a lot of things. Uh, tomatoes, we gave them to the world in a kind of a basket. But uh, in the meantime, there were a lot, a lot of other varieties of potatoes quinoa, grains, and herbs, other fruits that were hiding for 500 years. Mm -hmm. the, magic, the magic of food right now is that uh, letting these ingredients start talking again. Um, we are putting on the table all these ingredients. And uh, we found also this amazing culture, this amazing heritage. We didn't invent any recipe, ceviche, tiradito, and culture cows. We didn't invent it, that was, that was there. Mm -hmm. It was great. We, we, we were very proud in our houses with our culture, but there was a moment in history that, and that happened also in other countries, where we start thinking that we should be other one. We should, when we have to celebrate great restaurants, uh, fine dining restaurants or fun dining there, restaurants were, were reserved to foreign cultures because they were kind of better. You know? mm -hmm. uh, but right now, you know, we go to Peru, all the best restaurants are Peruvian. All the, all the great chefs are Peruvian, and they are using Peruvian language in their plates, their own ingredients, their own culture. Of course, uh, reviewed because we are in a different moment, and we are evolving all the time. Tradition is evolving. My ceviche, when I was a kid, was eight hours of cooking. <laughs> My ceviche right now is eight seconds of cooking. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's tradition right now. Yeah. So, uh, which is great in food, in food is that uh, it's very important that avant-garde chefs that are making research all the time 
and tradition evolving all the time. So you make a great balance between each other, and that's another uh, goal we had, and we succeed to understand each other that traditional chefs and modern chefs, street food chefs, and uh, fine dining chefs were equal. Mm. They are the same. They are not. Nobody is more important than the other one. Everybody is important. So um, I mean, I, I have a hard time getting uh, together how you managed to do all these things. I don't know, because you're innovating food, you're working as a, as a, as a chef yourself, who would come to the best restaurants in the world, and at the same time working with education. And you told me this story, for instance, about these fishermen that you helped get the brand and work mm -hmm. together and, and, and sort of the, the entrepreneurship. And yes, uh, please explain <coughs> a little bit of this. Well, I'm here representing my country. I'm here representing my movement. I'm part of the movement where uh, producers, uh, chefs, uh, consumers, customers, we feel we're part uh, of the same movement trying to uh, take our food uh, as an instrument of integration inside our country and promotion of our country inside the world. And uh, in that sense, uh, from the beginning, we work together, we don't compete, we share. We're building an image, a recognition, a brand, and we're building inside integration syst integrated systems based on trust, on respect, on admiration. So uh, from the beginning, every time we do something, we try to build teams because uh, we celebrate as our own victories, other victories, and we uh, try uh, fails as we as uh, they were our fails, and we help to do it all the time, trying to build recognition to everybody. At the beginning, there was vanity, there were <coughs> egos, there were competition between chefs, of course. Right now, we are united. At the beginning, where there was a lot of uh, the the fishermen, the, the producers, of course they didn't trust the chefs because the chefs were all the time in their own restaurants, thinking that the, uh, their destiny was to make great food for rich people and they stay in, in their kitchens and that, that, that was it. Mm. When the chefs start going out to the farms, start building this relation, we build uh, a union between chefs and producers. And this union is, is true, it's every day. It's an everyday union. Two months ago, we lost uh, uh, three of our best chefs. They went to work, uh, farm the potatoes, opening the season to support our farmers, and an accident, they, they died. They could be in their own restaurants, but they were there. Mm. And, 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 and that proves that it's a, a real, profound, and deep relation uh, that's going to be, that's not going to be destroyed by, by anyone. People by anybody. So after that, when we were together, producers and, and, and chefs, we went to tell this story to the customer. But when the customers start supporting the, the Peruvian food, everything changed. Because as you know, more than ever, the power is in, in the hands of the customers right now. Mm. The companies, the restaurants, everything must be more uh, 